Hi there, folks. Welcome to another episode of Michael in the Backyard. We're going to do a chainsaw. Now, this Pool and Pro, a little story behind it is I bought this when we moved here. Now, it's been this coming April will be 12 years we've been on this piece of property. I bought it within three or four months of moving here, and I got it from a, uh, it's a Orchlands. It's like a farming fleet or a, it's a small... I don't know what you want to call it. Hardware store, so to speak. They have nuts and bolts and tires and all kinds of other stuff. It's not as big as a farm fleet. It was smaller. But this thing here, they had it for sale for $99. Yes, $99. Now, I'm going to peek you down here. Underneath, stored back in here. It's been back there for a long time now. It's an old Homelite 360. They don't make them like that anymore. That one I had when I bought it when I was in my 20s. I've had it over 30 years. Wowzer. And it was about 15 years old when I bought it from a guy used. That thing was a workhorse. I actually have a three-foot bar that th thing will actually pull. But when I saw moved to this property, saw all the tree maintenance and the tree cutting I had to do right off the bat, uh... At $99, I couldn't pass it up. And I said, why is this for sale for so cheap? Because it's a Pool and Pro 46cc, right? And they said, well, it's last year's model, and we got the new models coming out, and you don't get a case or anything with this one. You just get to take the saw. I'm like, I'll take the saw. <laughs> so I bought it. I scooped it up. That thing has been an absolute workhorse. I haven't done a lot of things to it to, to be kind to it. Let's say that. Um... I've stuck this thing in the dirt to get rid of stumps before, uh, sacrifice blades. But in this video, I'm going to go through it because you can see right now as it sits, it's covered in, uh, it's got some cobwebs on it. It's just been laying around my shop here for quite a while. Now this has a, one of these jobs, jobbers here, springs about half gone in it for adjusting your blade. That doesn't really give me much fits. But uh, I've, obviously this is probably the second or third bar I've put on this thing. And the chain on it is, yeah, it'll last me a little while longer. We can get a few more sharpenings out of it. But we're gonna see if we can get her back in business here. I gotta do a lot of cleaning up on it. And uh, just for fun, I'm kinda curious how much fuel I have in it. That would be zero. That's the good news. Right, I say it's good news. It wasn't stored with any gas in it. How much oil we got in it? About a half a thing of oil. A part of me says, let's try to start it, but the other part of me says, while I'm rolling it around and doing things to it, let's not put any gas in it yet. I'm pretty oh. confident it'll start, but... I'm going to start off, we're going to take this cover off, we're going to take this blade off. I'm not sure if they're still doing this on saws. I haven't looked at saws forever, but it's got this thing that tightens it down, and actually it works. I've had good luck with it. We're going to go ahead and pull this thing completely off. Because it's plum chock full of a lot of stuff. But yeah, we've got some trees to cut down. I'm working on a project in the backyard. I'm going to take a chicken house down. It's got two trees around it that need to go. Because they're going to be in my way. Yeah, this thing is filthy. I'm not saying that the clutch... Could use a little replacing. But we might dig into that later. Let's make sure it runs first. Uh, we want to pull these screws off. And I haven't put a... I don't believe I ever remember putting a spark plug in this thing for as long as I've had it. But the other thing I also make sure I do on all my small engines, all of them, 
without fail is I don't run any alcohol through my engines. This is all regular fuel, regular unleaded fuel, but no alcohol, just the regular, regular. And uh, also, I always use full synthetic two-stroke oil, whether it's the steel brand or other brand. I was just over there checking to see if I had any two-stroke oil. Uh, the other thing I also do when I mix up my two-stroke oil, just because, you know, if you got a gallon of it, you may burn through that, doing a few trees, but just for lemon year in and year out, you might not even burn through a gallon of a two-stroke fuel. So I'll always just put the uh, stable right in it. And uh, it makes it last a lot longer. So I got this cover off here. Spark plug sitting right up here. Looks like it's a torch. <laughs> torch R7, whatever that means. I was going to go look, but I'm pretty sure I don't have any of those. What else we got? Let's pull this air filter off. This thing looks like it could use a little bit of cleaning. They still got great compression. If you guys will be able to see that or not i don't know if i'll be able to get you at an angle in there but the spark still got good spark yep so the cool part if we got spark we got compression all we need is fuel as long as that still works good we're in good shape these are all my spark plugs that i have for outboards and everything in between but i'm pretty sure the smallest guy i got is still bigger than that yep sir that's a JL 7LM Champion. Yeah, it was worth a look. Didn't know. Didn't know. You know, you don't know till you don't know till you look. We'll uh, get the solvent tank out. We'll clean up a lot of this stuff. And then uh, we'll see if I can find some parts and pieces because I wouldn't mind replacing that guy. Be honest with you because that's just been in there a long time Alrighty, we went and found ourselves some parts. ePartsReplacement.com, e I believe is the name of it. I'll put it right down here. And there again, I'm not sponsored by those guys, but you know, part of the purpose of this channel and my other channel is to help hook people up with parts and avenues to get their stuff repaired and back on the road if it's a car or back in the tree if it's a chainsaw or back on the water if it's a boat motor. You know, stuff like that. So... Oh, my nose is itching. You know what it is. Now, you'd be in here in the shop thinking, wow, Michael, it's sunny and, you know, 70 outside. Nope. Inside here, it seems pretty peaceful. But uh, outside, I went out, went into the house about two hours ago, and everything was just fine and dandy. And then, two hours later, we got a good inch of snow on the ground. And the winds are blowing. Glad that's all outside. Very thankful I have a place inside. Just, you know, right now the heater's got it at 65, 66 degrees in here. So it's sunny and 66 inside. 
And I've got this shop well insulated. Uh, my little 7,500 watt heater, electric heater, keeps it warm enough. Of course, the electric bill, yeah, it's letting me know it's there when that happens. But I was able to go onto this website, found this part. All I had to do was put in right here, this PP4620AVX by Poolin, and all the parts just go. So I was able to get me a spark plug, this little knobber jobber here, and I did clean this out with a solvent tank and blow it out. And this would probably last for another go round, but I got one of these coming as well as this clutch right here. This looks pretty good, but by the same token, I could put a new one on. And you can see how this one's gotten warm like it, like they do. But uh, yeah. I'm not unhappy with it. This all cleaned up really well. So here again, I'm waiting on parts, but I just thought I'd show you this for fun in the meantime. time. Let's, let's get you put down over here so I can show you what I'm looking at. Now what you got here is a Black Max. It's got a bear on it. This still has the tag on it, folks. And I left it on there. I bought this chainsaw, golly, two years ago, easily two years ago. And it still has the lock. Yep. And uh, never have cut with it, brand new. I bought this, Walmart had these things. They were like clearing them out, blowing them out, whatever you want to call it, right? And just adjusting the camera while I'm talking. And, <laughs> Has a 16 inch blade with this little kidney eye kickback tip, which will most likely get in my way. So I'll take that off. Um, that is a safety thing. Don't take yours off is what I'm saying. Don't do what I do. But uh, yeah, this thing here, brand new $50. Never put fuel in it. Nope, not even once. I've never ran it. It's, I got it home, unloaded. This is this is no joke. Some cobwebs from it being on the floor yet. In my parking garage, where I parked my car, we unloaded the car. This came out and sat on the ground, and it's been there for two years. At least two years. I'm pretty sure it wasn't last year. Might have been a year ago. I don't remember. But anyway, I've had it, and it's just been sitting here waiting so this morning this afternoon there again i've talked to you guys about fuel 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 and the fact that i only use full synthetic my local steel dealer that's in a town over you can buy these little these aren't cheap they're 17 dollars for six of them but they 2.6 ounces makes a gallon that's 50 to 1 mixture ratio but when i bought my steel uh weed eater if you bought a six pack, it gave you like a five year warranty or some, don't quote me on that, but it gave you a ridiculous amount of warranty just for buying six of those. Because I guess their thought is if you buy it, why wouldn't you use it since you already paid for it? So that's what's in here right now. And the only thing that hasn't been done yet on this particular deal is I haven't put the stable in it yet. So let's do that. Stable. Let's see. One ounce treats up to two and a half gallons. So we'll put maybe half an ounce in it. Hey, eh? oh, there's half an ounce. Boop. That fuel is now good for. How long is it good for? Keeps fuel fresh for up to 24 months. We got two years from now. Boom. Now, I will probably use this up before two years goes by, obviously, because I've got some sawing to do. But after the winter storm goes through, I'm not going to be cutting down anything until that's gone. 
so it might not be till spring but why not get the saw ready and in this case i realized i had the second saw i'd forgotten i actually had this upstairs in the in the garage i'm gonna just mix it up a little bit oh there's a little bit this smells like cat pee that smells better Whew. Wow, first fill up, I didn't overfill it and spill it all over. That's a miracle. Now, I have no high expect expectations about this Black Max $50 chainsaw. But, you know, if I cut two trees down with it, I've got my money's worth out of it. I've had this gallon of bar and chainsaw lube from Napa. For a long time. It takes a long time to go through a gallon. Whoa. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. It's been my experience anyway. So don't quote me as a factual on this. But typically, on these chainsaws, your reservoir for your chain oil and your reservoir for your fuel are timed out pretty close. So when you run out of fuel, you're, you're getting low on bar oil and you just... You know, keep it going. Bet you, bet you knew that though, didn't you? My audience is so smart and intelligent. I can tell by their awesome comments that they already know that. But you newbies that are new to the channel and haven't, you know, gotten all the experience from all my viewers from reading their comments on the channel may not have known that. That's good. We already spilled a little bit of bar oil, so we're breaking her in good. Now here, let's see. Release break. Ten times. What's what's this? Nope. Oh, the bulb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, now I see it in here. It filled her up. We'll give her a few more for fun. Pull three to five times. What if is it pointing at? I know we want to hit. <laughs> if this thing works, I'll be surprised. Set choke to run. Uh, pull start cord. Squeeze and release. Warm starting steps one, two, five, six, and seven. It's pointing at the choke there. Has a momentary switch for shutting her down. Let's see if we can get some two-stroke smoke out here in the shop. Now, proper starting procedure. That there is the San Andreas Fault. There's the, the, the California and over here is the Pacific Ocean. Okay, maybe not so much that. Oh, right. It says put your toe in there. Well... How does it, how about your size 13 might not fit? Popping. I hear it popping. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh, oh. 
bucks a guy let's see if the brake works brake works good You got fifty dollars for the fun out of it. <laughs> so you know what's crazy is this chainsaw here versus this Poolin Pro that I bought twelve years ago for ninety nine dollars, and I bought this one a year and a half, two years, no more than two years ago. Where's where? Yeah, but like my left hand don't know I'm talking. But uh, for 50 bucks, I can't complain. But you can tell the difference in some of the, the quality of the pieces and the plastic. I mean, there's a lot of plastic on both. Don't get me wrong. But the thickness, the thickness of the plastic is identical. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. It just feels like the Pool & Pro has a little more to it. Not trying to sell you on either one. But yeah, they were closing these out things out. And it's one of those things, is it any good? Is it not? Am I wasting my money? Well, let's just see how long it cuts. Right now, the bar, it runs. The bar oiler oils. I don't know how many cc this is. Does it say anywhere on here? Just black bags. Oh, what do we got down here? We got a little emission control. Serial number, item number. Okay, display, 38cc. 1025 of 19. Data manufacturer. Ten twenty five of 19. So this is January of 2024. So it's three, a little over three years, three and a quarter years old. God, has it been that long since I bought it? I just don't know. But anyway, we'll see what it does on trees. And it was a little something to do. Nice thing is at least it has this nice little black box. Blade guard pops on there. So, so yours truly don't accidentally sever himself okay well that's good to know uh yeah we got like i said this this thing here is a gallon and this took literally a few ounces and like i said this sticker's been on it since i bought it or a little thing that says you you need to oil it and what gas to use and in, in two languages all right that's good now we can finally throw that away literally right over the trash can and I, some days it feels like i couldn't hit the, the ground with my hat if i tried 50 times all right we'll be back on this video whenever i get my parts for the pool and pro 
and it'll run the same way it always has. I'm almost confident of it. As good as that thing runs, for sure. Yeah, that has a lot of trees on it. Mark my words, it has a lot of trees on it. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Blink your eyes one more time. I'll be back with more information. Well, folks, the idea of this video is to get my chainsaw put back together and running with some new components. But there's an online store I ordered these things from, a very popular online store. I've ordered parts from them in the past, but this time they have severely, severely disappointed me. And I'm not going to bash them. But what I don't like is the fact that I ordered four parts. I ordered this piece which is the clamp for here because the spring on here is weak. I have an air filter, a spark plug, and a new clutch. Not that this clutch was completely toast, but the fact that it, uh, you know, it's been on here a while. So I ordered these four parts, 7th of January. We're now into February. Halfway through, let's sell it 10, 12 days later. I called this online facility and I said, hey, just checking in. Uh, when's my stuff going to ship? The lady promptly tells me on the phone. She goes, looks up my stuff and says, oh, it looks like um, we have two of your things in stock and the other two on back order. And we have no idea when the back order will be fulfilled i said okay um no idea huh she says nope she goes all you can do is wait i said okay so uh, just for fun i checked my account and i was just looking to see if we had you know most companies don't charge your account until your product ships well they've already debited my account for everything i have ordered so bottom line is, I guess stay tuned. I'm going to play the waiting game. I'm pretty sure my chainsaw can survive several, many more trees until I get my parts. Until then, I'll I will reassemble it with old parts. Until then. Spark plug still has a good spark. It actually, it's burning... Burning pretty good. So we'll go ahead and get this back together. And see if she'll pop off for me. I actually don't want to put it all the way back together until I get my... What kind of fresh... Uh, looks like it takes a Torx bit. Or a square bit. Or well, it surely doesn't take a Phillips bit. But anyway, we'll, keep, we'll run this as long as we can. We'll go ahead and get the blade sharpened on it as well. Actually, what I want to do right now is fire it up without any bar on it to see, just to make sure my oil is going to pump to the thing on the side here because it should be pumping some oil. Well, let's see if she'll fire up. Yep, that's on, that's on. Hey, you know what? Not that this would have stopped it from firing. <laughs> Let's put the air filter back on. Duh. I did clean this one up really, really well. Nope. 
pump in action. Oh, maybe there was getting some pump in action there. Get a little more on here. I'll get this off so I can see it coming out. Where should it be coming from? Right there. That's the pump right there, eh? Okay. On again. Oh yeah, she's pumping good. I'm happy with that amount of liquid coming out. So we'll just get that on there. Got the old org on. We're gonna have to sharpen this chain, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she feels pretty dull. I've sharpened it a few times. I'll show you guys quickly how I sharpen them. Now this one has the chain tensioner Seems kind of cheesy, but you know, for the 12 years I've had it, it's actually worked pretty well. I cannot complain. Just gonna make sure I get it lined up in the spot there. Now some of you might be saying, get yourself a steel or an echo. You're not wrong. I like those brands a lot. It's just this one came up at the Well, it was right place, right times, and the money was cheap, so I bought it. Now, somebody's going to cringe when you see what I'm getting ready to do, but that's okay. Cringe away. Now, I've got this chain actually too tight right now. That's for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to sharpen it. Now, I'm not sure how you guys sharpen, sharpen your chainsaw chains, but with me, I usually use a little, I got a little stones that you can buy at the, you know, most of your hardware stores in the chainsaw section. A little round stone that fits your radius in here. And then I'll just get in here and, and sharpen them just like that. And I'll work both sides. And I usually do one angle all the way around the chain, and then I flip and do the other angle all the way around the chain, and no matter no time, you got you've got your chain sharpened, and that's that's just how I've been doing it for many many years. Some of you might be leaving some gnarly comments going, "I can't believe you sharpen your chain that way." It works, and if you're careful with your angles and you're gentle and you don't get it too hot, you don't you're not going to hurt anything. And they cut straight through a log for me when I'm done. Now it's time to put these things to work. I'm just debating whether I even need to notch it just for the simple fact it's only going to go one way. I think I'm just going to start going into it. She'll stop, start snap, crackling, and popping, I'm sure. Let's give her a whirl here. See if she's going to run. Here we go. Touch the building. Sweet. On the log, baby. Nice. 
nice piece of wood there. Well, let's get it limbed up. First off, how long did that take? Not very long. Love that popping sound it made. Us. 303 is 306. All right. I think part of me wants to go ahead and knock that old hickory down. See, we do that next. Mm -hmm. 